The chopper landed with a flurry of fine sand that seemed to cover everything, swirling up around the rotors and obscuring the world around them. For Ares, it didn't matter. All six of them had their masks on, the advanced visuals in their visors cutting through the cloudy interference like a knife. They said nothing as they disembarked faceless and terrifyingly efficient, the golden children of the Eclipse Initiative. Or they had been, but no amount of perfectly crafted excuse could keep Umbral off of them after the failure of Project Genesis. It hadn't been a total loss. Umbral was able to recover all of the research that had been done at the lab, as well as biological samples from the previous... Genesis iterations. But now, the eye of Umbral was upon them, and they had to be at their best if they wanted to get rid of the suspicion. Luckily, they were the best team operating under the Eclipse Initiative. It gave them more leeway than most, but Sentinel would be a fool if he thought for a second that they didn't suspect something was going on. He watched Aegis disembark, faceless like the rest of them but he knew his team member's body language to a fault. Sentinel looked at her and knew that at least in some ways he was a fool. She might have doomed them all, but he didn't even have the luxury of being furious with her anywhere but deep inside. Umbral was watching, and if they saw him treat his medic poorly, he was sure they would know something was up. So he treated her, Aegis the traitor, like he did all the rest of them. He wouldn't lie to himself and say that it didn't burn him up inside, like he had swallowed a flame. There were more consequences besides the extra attention too, and that chafed him more than anything else. The consequence landed in the land beside him, knees bent and seeming to exert no effort at all. Raptor stood straight, and turned his helmeted head to Sentinel as the chopper rose into the sky. Ready, Commander. The words tasted bitter in his mouth. Yes, Commander. Probation. At his age. It was a public shaming by the higher-ups. If Sentinel was a more emotional man, he'd have lost it already about the thinly disguised demotion. Umbral used the excuse that losing Cypher and then the half-failure of Genesis was reason enough to add Raptor on as the co-commander, but he knew that wasn't all. They had changed his former second-in-command, and now he was just their superhuman dog, listening to every order in command and obeying without thought or hesitation. Raptor reminded him, chillingly, of Hawkeye in that regard. This explained why the sniper was always close to Raptor. They were each other's trusted confidants. He had been in command positions long enough to see it. So while he wasn't technically demoted, he now had to share command with Raptor. Just as a precaution, they said. Well, Sentinel wasn't stupid. He knew it was so Raptor could keep an eye on him, and through him, Aegis. Part of him wished he was ruthless enough just to turn her in and have her gone from the team forever. The rest of him knew they'd execute her without a second thought. Or at least, warp her into something like Raptor. He wouldn't do it unless the entire team was in danger of going down for her stupid plans. If that happened, well, he didn't want to think about it. Not when it was time to work, at least. Arizona was a welcome change from the bitter cold and stifling rainforests that they had been sent to so much lately. The objectives had seemed simple enough, if violent. But violence was good. Easy. Free of any issues that might tear his team to pieces. The team was fully kitted out. There was no need for stealth or restraint today. They had been dropped in the Superstition Mountains, and it was 7.15 a.m., Less than a mile away, clearly visible, was the abandoned settlement of Flatiron City. Even empty, it felt out of place in the earth-toned desert. 
against the jewel-toned sky. Ten years ago, an enormous vein of gold was found, said to be the Lost Dutchman's Mine, and Flatiron City exploded into existence around it. The buildings were prefabricated and rushed in, megacorporations like Umbral squabbling for what little of the government still claimed natural wonders, such as the superstitions off-limits. That didn't last, of course. Umbral didn't get the contract. It ended up being a smaller company called SynthTech Holdings that had gone defunct after the utter failure of the mining operation. Within a year, the rapidly built city was a ghost town, the mine blocked off by a wall of hastily poured concrete. Ares didn't know why, but Umbral more than likely did, and just felt that it wasn't relevant to the team's mission. Sentinel had debriefed the team on what he knew. Synthetech had been too eager, expanding the flight iron mine quickly and messily. In the process, they made an accidental connection with another mine in the area, an abandoned and sealed off one that had been taken off maps decades ago, called Orphan Uranium Mine. There were obvious issues with exposure to the SynthTech miners, but that should have been able to be mitigated with the right protocols. Instead, entire teams were being lost, disappearing without a trace. And deep inside, they heard a rumbling, a skittering of legs across the stone. Mining teams were being lost daily, but SynthTech was desperate to close off the connection to Orphan Mine. They had sunk everything into the operation and the town that had to be built to support it. It was pointless. Whatever problem they had unleashed from Orphan Mine bled out into Flatiron City, slaughtering civilians in a massacre that had diminished the U.S. military, rushing in to squash the threat before it could spread. Flatiron City was almost a total loss, and the mine was immediately sealed, just like any documents relating to the disaster. Umbral had managed to get their hands on supposedly lost records, and whatever they found within them had prompted Ares' deployment. Apparently the threat that had decimated SynthTech Holdings was being considered well within Ares' ability to destroy. Sentinel had been given some rough drawings of the threat to share with the team, and what little information had been recovered about their weaknesses. Estimated numbers varied from dozens to hundreds, but the umbral biologists didn't think that the surrounding area could support hundreds of things. Sentinel really hoped that that was the case. Otherwise, they might be there for a week. The team hiked in, mostly silent. The only exception was Jester, who had turned to watch the departing helicopter while blowing out a long, nervous breath. Calm down. Aegis had tried to soothe him. Easy for you to say. Jester had replied sullenly. I'm on the same mission, so, yeah, easy for me to say. Keep it together, soldier. Jester was quiet for a minute. I know you have. Stop asking for drugs. There was a hint of humor in her voice. Sentinel had had enough. He had very, very little patience for either of those two. Quiet. They were immediately silent, and the only sound any of them heard was the dry desert wind whistling through the broken windows of the city beyond. The remainder of Flatiron City looked much older than it really was. The harsh climate combined with the cheaply produced prefab building materials had the place looking like a post-apocalyptic ghost town. Skeletons of buildings and the empty corpses of cars were the only things to see. Everything else had been reclaimed by the sand. The superstitions loomed above the entire place, rust red in the morning light. At the bottom of the jagged peak closest to the city was a small, almost unnoticeable spot of gray in the distance. The mine, though they were still far enough away that they could not see any details. Destroy any lingering threat in the city and secure the mine entrance. 
The geological engineers would come in once Ares had made sure the place was safe. That was the objective. Simple. Sentinel didn't put much weight into, well, superstition. But he knew that strange things were rumored to happen in the area, besides the Flatiron Threat. Conspiracies, urban and ancient legends. Ten years ago, he would have scoffed. But since that time, he had faced extraterrestrials and had a plant try to strangle him in the middle of a jungle. So he was on guard. There was a feeling of otherness in the air, but he brushed it off. There were confirmed monsters in the city. That was plenty of otherness to cause the feeling. As the team crossed the threshold into the city, the shadows of the buildings darkened their paths. Around them was the whistling and howling of the wind as it echoed. Otherwise, there was nothing. Hawkeye, okay. find your hide site. Report back when you're in position, Raptor said. And the sniper nodded once, peeling off from the group. They had identified a few good spots for him to post up in, but Raptor trusted him enough to let him make the final call. Not what Sentinel would have done, but apparently that didn't matter anymore. Flatiron City was a city in name only. Conceivably, SynthTech would have planned to expand the place as money came in from the mine, and more support systems were needed. But they never got the chance. Consequently, Flatiron City was only about four city blocks in size. Plenty for the team to cover in a reasonable amount of time. And plenty of opportunities to get ambushed. But that was nothing new for Ares. It was also compact enough that he could split the team up without them being too far apart if things went sideways. He considered the five of them that were left now that Hawkeye was gone. In any other situation, the personal issues that might have arisen from the Genesis debacle might have hurt the efficiency of the team. But Ares was better than that. Some of them might hate others as people, but this was work. As Ares, their personalities seamlessly melded into a unified force. The team's proficiency in execution was almost poetic, revealing their silent pact to set aside personal animosities in service of a greater cause. Raptor, with Tempest and Jester. There was only a single breath of hesitation. Aegis, with me. He didn't want her with him. But unified force or not, there was still a whisper that came from the man and not the soldier that said, Don't leave her with Raptor. Not that Aegis couldn't handle herself, but Raptor... Well, none of them quite knew the breadth of his abilities after the change. Everyone agreed, and the team split off. Hawkeye confirmed his post, the tallest building in town where he could see nearly the entire city. Once they reached the mine, he would adjust his position if needed, but he seemed confident that he would be able to make a shot even at that distance from his hide. Sentinel was ready. Falling into the mold of commander and soldier was easier than thinking, anyway. Raptor watched Sentinel and his two teammates disappear into the forest of crumbling buildings before turning to his two. Keep close and quiet. They moved through the streets like water. When they reached the entrance to a building, two would enter and clear the place while the third kept watch at the door, alternating positions without a word being spoken between them. He knew they were going to face something, eventually. But as the minutes dragged on into hours, the empty city was still suspiciously silent. And all the while, the mountain loomed. Hawkeye's voice crackled over the comms. Movement. One click to the west from Raptor's team. Both commanders confirmed they understood. Any idea what it might be? He asked the sniper. Hmm. No. Something shifted the rubble in front of the pharmacy. Understood. It didn't take long to make it to the identified destination and Raptor had the team slowly spread out to the right and left of him to cover the area. 
The pharmacy was destroyed in the front, the wall having collapsed to reveal the interior behind a pile of drywall and stone. Each of them took a knee and aimed their rifles, motionless despite the almost invisible rise and fall of their chests. Minutes passed. The wind blew, stirring up sand and dust from the crumbling buildings. A stone shifted. The sound of its scraping was quiet, but a clarion call to Ares. In perfect unison, Jester, Tempest, and Raptor turned their upper bodies until each of their rifles was fixed on the same place. Raptor quickly thought over his options. Wait whatever was causing the movement out until it showed itself. Or have Jester blow the place to hell. He was sure nothing around them was structurally sound, so he chose the former, having no desire to dig himself out of rubble if more than just the pharmacy went down. A single, fleeting hand signal was all he needed to communicate his decision to the other two. The thing emerged with one leg first, the appendage thicker and longer than a baseball bat, and segmented. It pushed up through the pile, a smattering of shimmering hair covering the leg, where dust wasn't obscuring it. Then a second, clearing the way as if it dug itself out of its lair, followed by a third. The creature pulled itself up with these legs. Five more of the appendages appeared, followed by two enormous, hulking body segments, pedipalps tasting the air in twitching, searching movements. It was the size of an Irish wolfhound, but much wider. Raptor had that immediate sharpening of his senses that always came when he was in the presence of an obvious threat. But besides that, it was an interesting thing to look at. In the shadows of the broken building, it appeared black or dark brown. Then it slowly stepped into the sun with chilling, arachnid locomotion. Hydrostatic pressure filled each limb with blood, making it flex with alien smoothness. When its carapace caught the light, it sparkled and reflected like a cut jewel, ocean blue and emerald green. When it turned its head, eight black eyes scanned the area, and two fangs the size of his forearm shone wetly. As cold and calculating as he had become after his change, there was enough of his old self left to recognize that Jester was probably losing his mind. As long as he kept it all on the inside, Raptor didn't care. He spoke as quietly as he could into the comms. Sentinel, I'm going to share my visual feed with you. Seconds later, his co-commander replied, Silence. Face just one at a time, the better. Agreed. Hawkeye, send it. It wasn't silent, but the crack of Hawkeye's sniper rifle was certainly less obtrusive than Raptor opening fire on the ground, let alone what Jester might do. Without any clear idea of where the giant spider's weaknesses might be, Hawkeye sunk the round right beneath the creature's cluster of eyes. It made a terrible sound, a screech-like dull knife on glass, staggering before it fell, blue blood flowing from the wound and pulling around it. The two teams agreed to recombine, with Sentinel's team coming to Raptor's position while they kept their sights trained on the down spider. Soon enough, the other three joined their ranks, Sentinel and the Soldier, taking the places between Raptor, Jester, and Tempest, while Aegis approached the spider to confirm that it was dead. She gave them the affirmative, and they set about clearing the space where the spider had emerged to see if there were any more of them. There was a small tunnel that was mostly collapsed in, too small for any others to be hiding, so Ares moved on from there. It was slower going, with all of them clearing the city as one unit, but the spider was intimidating enough that he considered it necessary. Hawkeye's shot had been enough of a disturbance for Ares to hear other sounds of movement around them, 
none of them overly loud or fast. More like a warning. Hawkeye reported other instances of movement, but they were sporadic and all over the small town. It was decided that Jester would set tripwire charges as they progressed. The explosion would no doubt bring other creatures out of the woodwork, but it was better than being ambushed. Sometimes the soldier followed him, but Jester was more efficient on his own. Once they fell into a rhythm, Raptor was pleased with how quickly it was going. This is what he had missed, what he wanted from the team. But the dramatics of the last mission, things that would have ruined him, had Umbral found out. He might have lost any sort of respect for Aegis and to a lesser degree Sentinel, but working together again so effortlessly made it easy to forget. The mine was coming into view. Clearer the closer they got. A huge, gaping maw that had been closed shut with grey cement. It looked like the mountain itself was choking. When they were still at a distance, Raptor still had hope that the first spider was an anomaly, a leftover from the initial attacks on the city. But as they got closer, and the shadows of the day began to shift, he could see deep, cavernous black holes, as tall as a man and just as wide, peppering the face of the mountain around the mine. They were tunnels. The closer they got, the more he could see. If one spider escaped per hole, they were going to be busy. But if multiple spiders used each tunnel, being busy quickly morphed into being in trouble. The first sign of said trouble came when the soldier turned his head towards one of the outbuildings of the mining operation, where huge pieces of machinery were stored. Raptor didn't hear anything at first but the jerky movement of the soldier's head caught his attention. He pivoted to look just as one of the giant spiders burst out of a window, glass flying as it landed on six of its legs, reared up, and scratched at the air with the remaining two. He was quicker than Hawkeye this time, popping a smattering of rounds from his M4 that tore into the arachnid's body. Ares began to pivot to focus in on the same location, but Raptor gave the signal to spread out and cover all directions. His heightened senses were picking up something strange. It felt like a bass speaker, a rumbling that he couldn't hear, but he could definitely feel, and it was all around them. Then, the crack of Hawkeye's rifle sounded once, twice, followed by the glassy screech as his targets died. That was all it took. The horde was on them. Immense spiders, hairy, shimmering, ranging in size from a large dog to a house cat, came spilling out of the orifices of every building around them. On the mountain, they spilled from the tunnels like an open tap. They could hear above the din of the spiders, the slow and steady exhale of the sniper over the comms before he set to work, his shots coming in even intervals, almost like clockwork. Time slowed for Raptor, like it always did in combat. In the distance, the muted sounds of some of Jester's charges being tripped rumbled through the city like thunder. Sentinel gave the command for a concentric defense, and the team circled up. It was less of a defense, considering that their objective was to slaughter the threat, but there wasn't much else they could do until they cut a path through the spiders. The creatures came at them with all the mindless violence he expected. There was little finesse to their fighting, just magazine after magazine emptied into the horde. The sound of automatic fire cut through the crack of Hawkeye's rifle and the boom of Jester's shotgun. He tried to gauge the threat. First, the creatures were huge and mindlessly violent, so their strength could be an issue. Each spider had two long fangs, and they were damp, and potential venom. And then there was the web. It was almost comical when some of the spiders turned, going up as high as they could on their back four legs, abdomen, and spinneret pointed skyward. 
The gray-white webbing shot out of them in a torrent, and there was nothing to do but dodge. Where the other spiders inadvertently got hit with the stuff, it seemed to hold them fast, impossibly sticky. Out of everything, it might be the most dangerous. He relayed this information, but it was difficult to determine which ones were getting ready to attack with the web. They needed to clear out a large number of them at once, or they were literally going to end up glued in place. There's a storage container to the right of you, Hawkeye told them. Solid. Unlikely there are any inside. Get just on top of it, Tempest. Raptor barked. Jester and Tempest peeled off, three black shadows cutting through the chaos. Despite calling out Tempest as the escort, Jester led, shotgun clearing the path ahead while Tempest defended the back of them. Raptor watched them to make sure they made it, but it was hard to focus on the trio, like his sight was being forced away and back to the fight directly in front of them. Jester felt like two people in one body, little Felix, wearing the immovable, fearless skin suit of Jester, was curled into the fetal position, screaming as every nightmare he ever had played out in front of him. Jester wasn't terrified of spiders. He had undergone the same mental exposure training that the rest of the team did, and fear was not part of his emotional repertoire. Felix, though? Felix did not like spiders, and that was the understatement of the century. But there was no room for Felix on the battlefield. Tempest boosted Jester onto the top of the container. The soldier was already there, but didn't offer a hand to help. Once he was up, Jester wasted no time changing weapons, switching the Tavor TS-12 for the M320 grenade launcher, stock already attached. The demolition expert braced the stock against his shoulder, took a knee, and called out the direction he was firing in. No need to be discreet. Spiders didn't speak English. He aimed for the biggest grouping, firing into them. The grenade left the barrel with a hollow pop, and when it hit the group, the explosion sent powder blue guts and fuzzy spider segments flying. Disgusting but kind of awesome. Jester turned to the soldier to share his sentiments, but changed his mind at the last second. Turning his head didn't seem like the right thing to do. Plus, when he did, he got the slightest hint of rot drifting into his nostrils. Slowly but surely, he cleared a path so the rest of the team could start to spread out. Every few minutes, he would hear one of his charges going off in the distance, and it made him grin. Ares was holding their own, including Tempest, who was still below him. Now that he had a better view of the place, he could see that the number of spiders wasn't as overwhelming as they might have first assumed. He could also see that a few of the spiders, maybe ten of them, were paler than the others, a sickly bile green. They were at the back of the horde, but making their way steadily to the front. Jester was quickly coming to the conclusion that the spiders were even more problematic now, that their numbers were lessened, and they had room to move. The damned things could jump, landing dangerously close to the other four Ares members even as they claimed and cleared more space. It was just him and Tempest by the container, and he had five grenades left. Making a split-second decision, he aimed away from the spiders, and instead at the walls around the mouth of the mine. When the first one hit and exploded, he whooped in triumph as the spider tunnels collapsed in on themselves. After closing almost all of the tunnels with the rest of his grenades, he looked down at Tempest, who was breathing hard and wiping gore from her visor. It made his chest clench. Damn, he didn't think they were getting that close to her. The soldier was already back with the rest of the group, and had offered no help to her either. I'm out, he told his commanders. Return, then, Raptor responded. Shotgun in hand once more, they pushed through. One spider leaped from on top of an old truck, and Tempest had her knife in hand in a flash, ready to cut it down before the falling creature jerked to the side, 
and hit the ground, dead. Hawkeye was providing coverage for the duo. After almost losing a boot to a puddle of webbing, Jester and Tempest made it back to their positions, just in time to see one of the bile green spiders raise its pedipalps and shoot a stream of acid in a deadly arc through the air. Shit! Tempest gasped, jumping back as the acid passed through the soldier and landed at her feet. A few drops hit her boots, and Aegis was yelling. Wash it off, now! It was already eating through the leather, but Tempest was calm as she poured the water from her canteen over her feet, washing the acid away and leaving just the small holes that it had managed to tunnel. All of the acid spiders seemed to hit the front lines at the same time, and Ares was forced to take cover behind several buildings and construction equipment, while the spiders made it rain corrosive liquid. They were tougher than the darker spiders, their carapaces thicker to resist the acid they held inside themselves. Raptor was crouched behind a bulldozer with Sentinel and Aegis. Tempest and Jester were behind a storage container again. The soldier was nowhere to be seen. Hawkeye was their saving grace, taking out the acid spiders one by one. At first, the shot seemed to do nothing, but the sniper regrouped and aimed for the eyes. It took longer to bring them down, but it did the job. But the others were still a threat, and they were pinned. Raptor was calculating the odds of getting to the mine. They were still far enough away that the spiders would have to retreat back into their holes to regroup, but Jester had destroyed that possibility for them. It might be an opportune chance to have all of the arachnids in one space at one time, so they could finish the job but it also meant they would have to be in close quarters with the spiders, and the acid was a problem. He was about to give the order, when a new sound broke through the din of the spiders. He couldn't identify it at first. It was too low. The closer it got, the more he could feel it in his chest. The vibration of it shook the ground. The spiders stopped, turning in the direction of the sound. Ares took the opportunity to mow them down, but the spiders didn't seem to notice. They were waiting for whatever was making the sound. Raptor felt his stomach drop. A giant spider, easily three times the size of the others, burst from the mine entrance. The cement sealing it shut exploded, sending chunks of rocks and debris flying. The spider was a deep, dark blue, and it moved with purpose. It was big, bigger than the bulldozer he had been using for cover, but not by much. The spiders parted for it, and time seemed to slow down. The noonday sun beat down, and the smell of iron, heavy blood filled the air from the massacre all around them. Raptor was frozen. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. It was bigger than any spider had the right to be, and he could see that it was even more heavily armored than the acid spiders. He hadn't been afraid of much since his recovery, but this set off something instinctual, something primal in his brain. It was a fear that not even years of humble training could burn out of him. He waited for Hawkeye to take a shot, but the sniper was silent and Raptor could only imagine what was going through his head. Time kicked back on again. The soldier appeared next to him, smelling of sickly sweet decay, and Sentinel gave the order to fall back. Raptor wanted to argue. They had to kill it, but he couldn't deny the wisdom in the command. It was regroup or die. The spider was moving fast, faster than the small ones, and Ares began to retreat. Tempest and Jester took point as they sprinted for the road out of town. The soldier was next to him. Sentinel and Aegis were on his other side. Raptor had to look back. The spider was gaining on them, and Hawkeye was firing round after round into it. They were bouncing off, ricocheting into the buildings around them. Hawkeye was rarely frustrated, but all of them heard the muttered curses coming over the comms. Tempest and Jester had reached the road, and the soldier was next. 
Sentinel was behind him and Aegis next to him. They were going to make it back into the relative safety of the city. He felt a swell of relief strong enough that it surprised him. Among the sounds of their feet pounding against the sandy, cracked pavement and the skittering movements of the arachnids, there was also the sizzling hiss of acid being sprayed. Raptor risked a glance back and saw one green stream of it hit the ground right in front of Sentinel and Aegis. The taller man leaped over it, but Aegis judged and knew she couldn't make the jump. She stumbled to a stop, rifle raised. Circle back! Sentinel called just as they crossed into the city, and the rest of the team ceased their flight, turning and spreading out, zeroing in on Aegis and providing what cover they could from a distance. The giant was close and closing in fast, but the horde of smaller spiders was nearing depletion. More of the pale, corrosive ones were left than the others, and as soon as the puddles of acid soaked harmlessly into the sand, new ones were spat into existence. Aegis banked to the left around the pool of it, her back to Ares as she kept the smaller creatures off of her. But it was a close thing and she had little paths to take before the largest of them had her. Acid to the right, a German shepherd-sized spider to the left. She went left, firing into the body as it whipped itself around to protect its head, stumbling and falling as the hail of bullets sank in. Aegis never saw the one that leapt from behind her, and took her down until it was already on her, front two legs pinning her shoulders as her rifle flew from her hands and skidded across the sand. Raptor clenched his jaw, weighing the chances of getting to her versus staying with the rest of the team. But he didn't have to worry. The medic's arm shot off to the side. With an impressive show of strength, she ripped the fang from the spider she had just dispatched, violently pulling it from the body, venom sack dangling from the base of it like a balloon. In the same smooth movement, she stabbed it into one of her attacker's right eyes, shoving it as deeply as she could until the thing reared back in agony. Freed, Aegis leapt to her feet, scooped up her gun from the ground, and kept running. It was a small success, but they still needed a larger victory if they were going to finish the job. Now, hidden in the ruins of the city, the large spider had a harder time locating them and maneuvering its big, bulbous body. It was flanked by the acid spiders, who would shoot their seemingly endless supply of liquid death at any moment. Raptor was coming to terms with the fact that they were going to have to settle in for a long, drawn-out battle when he heard a whoosh and smelled burning hair. It was followed by the metal-on-glass shriek and a single triumphant bark of laughter. The acid is flammable, the sniper said, reloading another incendiary round, his voice so deadpan that he might as well have been reporting the weather. Go! Raptor barked. Jester went. The demolition expert took off, Tempest covering him, and Hawkeye clearing the path ahead. Raptor was impressed. Jester didn't even hesitate, just ran, shotgun in hand, until he was close enough to the spiders their acid was inches from hitting them. At one point, a single drop hit his glove, and he pulled it off, tossing it aside without even a second thought. He didn't stop, though. He just kept running. And when the acid spiders shot their streams of acid at him, Hawkeye took them out. When he was close enough, he skidded to a stop. Jester flipped the switch on the TS-12, cycling over to the third chamber where he had five frag-12 rounds loaded. The shotgun barked, and all around Jester, the world exploded into fire. He aimed for the pools closest to the giant spider, and the hairs covering its body went up like a thousand little matches, flames crawling up the creature with joyful ease. The sound the thing made was awful, a high-pitched screech that made Raptor's teeth ache, Get the acid spiders, Sentinel told Hawkeye, and the sniper did. The sound of the rounds hitting the carapaces, like music to his ears. The giant spider was writhing, trying to put the flames out, but it was too late. 
Jester had circled around and was back with the rest of Ares. The spider was burning, and the smaller ones were panicking, trying to get away. It was no use, though. Ares, rifles fixed and firing, and the fires took them out one by one. Raptor looked around. The smell of burning hair was strong, and the giant spider was still shrieking as the inferno consumed it, collapsing one leg at a time. Ares stood, watching it burn. It's not dead, Sentinel said, and Raptor nodded. Tempest, finish it. Tempest and the soldier approached the spider, which was still making noise, but it was quieter, weaker. It was dying, and she did what she could to hasten the death, knife cutting through the smoldering carapace like butter. Tempest did the job, and the giant spider fell, the ground shaking with the force of it. Ares waited, watching, making sure it was dead. The fires ate the acid fuel and burnt themselves out in the sand, leaving nothing but black, greasy splotches behind. It was over. A messy but thorough victory. Something was making Tempest feel sick, her stomach churning, but she kept her mouth shut. At first, she thought it might be the unrepentant gore of the fight, but the smell creeping under her mask and into her nostrils wasn't that of fresh or burning meat, but something worse, something dead, something foul. It was the stench of hundreds of dead soldiers on a week's forgotten battlefield or a mass grave in the hot summer sun. It was making her skin crawl, but they were almost ready for extraction. She wasn't going to have to deal with it much longer. Tempest considered asking Aegis for something to settle her stomach, but the soldier walked between her and the medic as they cleared the city a final time, and it was hard to look past the soldier, or even turn her head in its direction. I must be getting sick, she thought. Who knows what kind of germs those damn spiders were carrying. It wasn't just her stomach protesting either. She was feeling shivery, feverish, anxiety gripping her chest like a vice. Tempest had been feeling weird since they had returned to the city, but she had chalked it up to an adrenaline crash. It had happened before, and it was always unpleasant. But this was different. She could feel the soldier on her back, and it was making her sweat. She wanted to turn and look, but she couldn't. Her neck was locked in place, and she couldn't shake the feeling that it was waiting for her to make a move, to turn her back and show her throat. She didn't want to show her throat. She didn't want to be food. Tempest shook her head, trying to clear it. What the fuck? Food? Ares was safe. She was safe. But the soldier was there. It had helped them. It had saved Aegis, hadn't it? No. No, she saved herself. The soldier was their ally. It was a monster. It was her friend. Tempest's rifle was heavy in her hands, and she was having a hard time keeping a grip on it. The team circled back to the mine, this time going close enough to touch the shattered cement of the seal, documenting it in broad strokes for the engineering team that would come in once they were finished. Just as they got within arm's reach of the superstitions, the comms crackled, and Hawkeye spoke. His voice was always frustratingly neutral and devoid of emotion, but Tempest could sense something that wasn't normally there. Was the sniper... Shaken by something? Sentinel. Raptor. Have the team take a few steps back. Slowly. Don't turn around. It didn't take any convincing. Do it. Raptor said. They stopped in their tracks, and in perfect sync, walked backward. One step. Two. Three. Stop. Hawkeye said. 
still even keeled. Go forward again. Still slow. It was normally a big breach for one of them to command the team besides Sentinel and Raptor now. But if it was for the immediate safety of the team, there was an exception. Sentinel gave the signal, and they stepped forward again. Four steps. Shit. Hawkeye breathed, and the fear in his voice made Tempest break out into goosebumps. There was the click of him either shutting off his comms or switching channels, and three people down from her, Sentinel went stiff, his head turning to look at the rest of them. Hawkeye clicked back over and said simply, There's an extra person with you. Fear was like ice running down her spine. The impossibility of the observation warring with her training, insisting that she trust her teammate, even if he was the only one she might ever doubt. She couldn't help herself. Tempest looked at the rest of her team one by one. Sentinel, Jester, Aegis, the Soldier, and Raptor. Everything looked right to her, but her trust and her training were pushed to the absolute limit when Sentinel raised his rifle, pointing at all of them. It was obviously not human. I didn't notice until you were far enough away from me, but as soon as you moved back, it was like everything was perfectly normal. It's fucking with our perception. Hawkeye had told him over the private channel. He was a leader. He was their leader, and he had failed them before. Sentinel wasn't going to do it again. He knew every member of Ares almost as well as he knew himself. Hell, maybe even better in some circumstances. Their movements, their body language, skills and weaknesses. He knew them. This meant if Hawkeye was right, finding the stranger would be effortless. But as he turned in a slow circle, he broke out in a cold sweat. He couldn't pick anyone out. It was like his brain was short-circuiting, telling him that everyone was accounted for, that Ares was Ares and everything was fine. Sentinel forced himself to focus, to really look at his team. Tempest was nervous. Jester was exhausted. Aegis was calm, and Raptor was alert. He went around again and then again, and he was about to order them to take their masks off when he saw it. The smallest shiver in reality. The hunched shoulders and almost mechanical jerking of the soldiers' hands. When he tried to focus in, it was almost impossible, his brain begging him to let his eyes slip away. The scent of death crept in. He refused to look away, ignoring the headache that materialized in his skull the longer he did. It felt like an ice pick to the brain, and absentmindedly he could feel his nose start to bleed. But Sentinel was sure. He had to be. With steady hands, he moved the rifle just a hair to the right and emptied five shots into the head of the soldier, the entire time fighting the idea that he was executing one of his own. As soon as the first bullet left the mouth of the gun, the fail that had trapped them inside disappeared, and he saw the soldier for what it really was. How in the hell had he not seen it before? Everything happened in the blink of an eye. Instead of another black-clad Ares member, the thing that had invaded their group was a monster. It was taller than a man, with hunched shoulders, its skin a mottled red, fleshy color. It looked old and desiccated, and the skin was covered in deep, puckered scars. Its head was too small for the body, and the eyes were large, huge, the pupils blown wide. A humanoid face, with a wide mouth filled with too many teeth, and four-fingered hands tipped with filthy, dagger-like claws. It tried to go for the person nearest to it, Jester, lunging, eerily silent. It was already injured and striking out in anger, 
but Sentinel was faster. He fired off three more shots, two into the chest and one into the back of the head. The thing collapsed, and Sentinel was breathing hard, adrenaline making his heart pound. What the fuck was that? Tempest asked, and her voice was shaky. Then there was a touch of awe in her voice when she asked, How did you know which one it was? He didn't know how to answer her, so he said, I just knew. Then to everyone, We need to get out of here. We don't know if this is the only one of these things. And if there are more, we aren't equipped for any sort of psionic interference. Hawkeye, call for extraction, and have them lend out further. The last thing we need is the pilot's brain getting scrambled. Raptor added. Gingerly, he prodded the creature with his boot. It waited for us to clear out the big threat, he observed. It wanted us to think it was helping, Sentinel said and he could feel a cold, sick feeling in his stomach. He had trusted it. He had let it stand next to them, had let it walk amongst his team. He had let it get close. Extraction is on the way, Hawkeye reported, and they started the long walk out of the city. The superstitions remained at their backs, towering, silent observers. You think there are more of these things? Jester asked. And Sentinel could hear the exhaustion of his voice. They had been out here for a long time, and he was ready to go home. I think that there is a lot that we don't know, Sentinel said, and no one disagreed. They made it out of the city, and they waited. The silence was thick and uncomfortable. Hawkeye joined them halfway out, and they stood together, weapons drawn, waiting for extraction. It came, and they loaded up, and Sentinel sat, looking out the window as they flew away, watching the superstitions grow smaller and smaller. They were in for one hell of a debrief when they returned. Sentinel was tired. Ares had returned to base, and they had been debriefed. They had gone over every moment of the mission and when they were done, they were sent to the medical wing for a full physical. From there, it was to the psych department to make sure that no lingering issues remained from their encounter with the stranger. They were all given a clean bill of health and then released, with orders to take the next 48 hours off. Sentinel had no plans to do that. He had a report to write. He had been in his office for three hours when Tempest knocked on the door. She didn't wait for him to answer, just pushed her way inside. Sentinel was too tired to argue with her, and he didn't try to stop her. What's up? he asked, and she sighed. I can't sleep, she said, and he nodded. Yep, me either. I keep seeing that thing, she said and she sounded haunted. Sentinel didn't blame her. He had been seeing it too. Me too, he admitted. It's making me question my own brain, Tempest said, and she was pacing, her hands moving as she talked. How did you figure it out? I told you the truth the first time, he said, and Tempest stopped pacing. I just knew. He wasn't looking at her anymore, but at the laptop screen in front of him. It's hard to explain. I couldn't pick it out from the four of you, but I could identify each of you. That's how. Tempest was quiet. Sentinel glanced up at her. She was watching him, her expression thoughtful. I... I don't know if I could have done what you did. Her voice was quiet. I think you could have. What if you had been wrong? She asked, pacing again. I wasn't. And she shook her head. But what if you were? She pressed, and Sentinel sighed. Then I would have shot one of my teammates. 
She stopped again. You would have killed one of us. Yes. Jesus, she said, running her hand through her hair. That's a lot. It is, he agreed. Tonight, under the gaze of his youngest team member, the weight of his command was heavy on his shoulders. Get out of here, Ari. It's late. She didn't argue with him, just nodded and left, leaving Sentinel alone with his thoughts. He didn't write the report that night. He couldn't. Instead, he sat in his office, thinking about what Tempest had said. What if he had been wrong? What if he had shot one of his teammates? He didn't know what he would have done. Maybe it was better if Raptor took over command. But he wasn't ready to give it up, even if it was draining the life from him. Sentinel sat, and he thought, and he was still thinking, when the sun came up. <laughs>